Hello and welcome to Sectors Up Close. I'm Ramzan Karamali. Today we're focusing on the US real estate sector and my guest is Bob Jenkins, Global Head of Research at Lipa for the London Stock Exchange Group. As the Federal Reserve raised interest rates to control surging inflation, investors fled the market for real estate investment trusts. The S&P 500 Real Estate Index has lost over 12% over the past year, massively underperforming the wider market, as investors move money into higher yielding assets such as treasuries. In the housing market itself, surging mortgage costs put off would-be home buyers, resulting in existing home sales falling to their lowest since 2010, according to data released this week. That forced many households onto the rental market, where soaring rents were a major contributing factor to last week's inflation data. But as the real estate market softens, could that lure investors back in? Well, to help us answer that, I'm joined by Bob Jenkins from LSEG. Bob, first of all, what's your overall take of the housing market and what is the knock-on effect for housing REITs? Well, you know, Ramsden, as you mentioned already, the U.S. housing market is one of pent-up demand for sure, right? And, and that, that demand really swelled right after the pandemic when people are let out of their houses and able to go back and open houses and look at houses and buy. And of course, interest rates were at historic lows, as were mortgages. Um, but they've since risen from the two and a half range up to almost seven, briefly touching into that level, uh, which raises that monthly payment, that monthly mortgage payments, some 60% in some cases, upwards of $700 a month. So that has really deterred people from buying. But yet that demand is still there. And, and you have kind of this kind of knock-on effect, if you will, of uh, wages are rising at certain levels. And that, that has to have, create like a, a, an effect up the ladder of real estate. So the, you need people to be selling and buying in order for you know, transactions to take place. And it's not happening right now. And I think that's shifting uh, the demand away from buying because it's cheaper to rent than to buy right now. You've said in the past, Bob, that the link between housing REITs and inflation is broken. Uh, why is that? I wouldn't have said broken. I think um, there are expectations around the facts that REITs are traditionally considered an inflation hedge. In fact, there are many what we call real return type mutual funds out there, which that is a primary component, typically a, anywhere from 10 to 20 percent allocation. So I think investors generally view them as an area of, safe, of safety during a, a rising rate in an inflationary environment. But they broke off a little bit this year. And I think one thing, of a note of caution to always keep in mind if you're invested in any of these types of things, because TIPS also had some issues this year, it's never just for the short term. It's got to be a little bit more for the long term. But in the case of REITs, that heavy financing impact on the operations of REITs raised their financing costs. In addition, you had valuation dislocations taking place from investors selling off going to higher yielding assets. Collectively, uh, that combined with, I think, overall market sentiment that the real estate in industry in the U.S. Uh, was troubled. Um, that created the selling wave that may have perhaps overshot just a little bit. So do you think that the, uh, the reputation that housing REITs have as an, an inflation hedge, can that ever be restored? Do you think it will be restored soon? I just think you have to look at it over a longer period of time than just, you know, a year. Uh, and I think this is a little bit of a special situation. There wasn't, there has not always been this kind of correlation between the movement of interest rates um, and uh, the, the impact and valuations on, on REITs that we saw this past year. That hasn't been really an historic thing. So uh, I think it's really a little bit of unprecedented at this point. And yet, you know, these, these again are products that are designed to, to be more of inflation head. So I think over time, uh, the underlying fundamentals, which are strong and have been strong, particularly in residential uh, REITs, um, will, will win out. So they, you think they will win out. Yes. So should, should we be looking at housing REITs again? Should investors be looking to put their money there? And what should they look out for when they're looking at housing REITs? Well, you know, in general, I think uh, you want to be cognizant of the region of which the REITs are focused on for the residential REITs. Not all regions in the U.S. are recovering at the same pace and uh, have the same attractiveness to, to the residential market. Um, areas where there is job growth, particularly again, uh, and as we're seeing among some of the lower and mid-wage earners, um, those are areas where you're going to have probably that stronger demand for REITs. And I think we're definitely seeing that more across the south as opposed to the northeast, um, where rents are still relatively high. So it's the areas where the rents are relatively even lower. And again, rents are generally better than buying a house right now in terms of your monthly outlay uh, to live in it. Um, but I, I think you want to be focusing a little bit more on REITs perhaps that are uh, in the southern portion of the U.S. Bob Jenkins from LSEG. Many thanks for that. Welcome. And that is your roundup of the U.S. real estate sector. I'm Ramzan Karmali and this is Reuters.